Welcome to this one friends, in this one we're going to take a look at using several kinds of functions to improve the appearance of our output. Okay, so let's begin here. And the first stage this time is to import some data. And I have got to, to go through that process because the data has to be in a certain format, it has to have certain features so I can illustrate certain concepts. So I'm going to do this, I'm going to type here on my dbase this time and not AdventureWorks. I'm going to go over to tasks and import data for use in Excel files saved on the lesson resources. Click that. We've done this stage before, so this is nothing new. I expand that node. Make sure you select Microsoft Excel as a data source type. Click on Excel file path. All right, work a data. That's what the file is called. And it looks like this roughly. I'll take a look at it briefly. As you can see, it's got just some basic fields. It's got the, the birth date. I generated these values randomly inside Excel. It gets a salary, which as you can see is not nicely formatted. And it's also got some comments over here. Let me scroll over. You see it's got comments. And the problem with the comments is there's like a lot of space to the right and to the left wasted, you see? So we'll have to trim that away. And then at number five over here, you also see something written in a completely different script. This one happens to be the Georgian script from the Caucasus under Russia. The point is that this is a different script. I'm going to make sure that when you bring this in, that the script is preserved and not changed. All right, so just select this file and then click Open. And click Next. All right, from the next one here, select on the bottom SQL Server Native Client 11. Use Windows Authentication. The database is my DBase. Click Next. Copy data from one or more tables or views. Correct. Click Next. And then click on Edit Mappings. And I want you to take a look at something here, these fields. So remember that the birth date we're thinking of is basically a date. So notice that the source is a birth date and the destination is a birth date and the type of data is a date time. All right, if you expand that, you can just perhaps also choose date if you like. The date time, eh, too complicated. Just choose date. That's good enough for our purposes. Simple. The salary is being saved here as a float. Again, we're thinking of it as money, so why not choose money instead? That's a type of data after all. And then for the last one, for the comment, leave that as NVAR char. And the size is 255. That's fine. Our data is not so wide that we need so many, correct? Characters. All right, so that's all stored as you can see. Okay, click OK. So that's the mapping between the fields inside Excel and SQL Server. Click Next. I just keep clicking Next, Next, Finish. Hopefully by the end you will see something that says 14 rows transferred. Close this. All right, let's take a look at everything. So, do this first. Type select. Select star from, and this was called worker data. And remember, when it's imported, it gets the little dollar symbol like that. That's how it should look. Okay, so give it an execution, and it looks like this. Well, first of all, the birthday looks pretty good, and the salary can be formatted so it looks better with the dollar symbol, the comma, and so on. And for the comments, as you can see, there's a lot of wasted space around each comment. But the good part is that even though we've imported something written in a different script, these symbols over here, they're preserved and they look good the way they're supposed to look. Okay? All right. We haven't lost right, writing from another language. And we're using NVAR char for this column. All right, I'm going to leave it at that. And at the next stage, I'm going to start finding things as follows. So instead of just doing select everything, I'm going to be a little more, I'm going to say this instead. First of all, I want to find the age. So in the basic, the number of years I have passed from the birthday to today. So to do that, I'm going to type day diff. That's a function, you see? That's a function. So you put down the parentheses and it says interval. That's the first quantity you input. Here you can specify whether you want it in years, you want it in days. So I'm going to type year because I want it in years. Next bit says the starting date. Well, that you can get from the birth date field in the table, the starting date. We're measuring, you know, obviously the way you measure birthdays, right? From when somebody is born until today, that's it. So I'm going to say the following. And again, because birth date has a space in it, put brackets and then type birth 
and then date. Then the next bit says ending underscore the date. So that would be today. I'm going to do that by typing a function that says get date. And make sure that is closed within right here. Opening and closing parentheses. So it's closed within the date diff function. It's located within the date diff function. And then let's alias this. We can. I'm going to type as age because that's what it represents. It's basically the number of years that have passed between the birth date and today. So we're aliasing this as age, reasonable. Let's take a look at this first output. Let execute. And it says, here are the ages. Keep in mind that the data, you know, I randomly generated in Excel. The numbers themselves don't really matter. The logic is what counts. So that's that. Okay, at the next stage here, we've got that. If you vary this parameter, the value of that quantity there, where it says year, so that it says, for example, day, and you run it, take a look at the difference. Now, right now it's in years. But then it gives you this quantity here, you see? Days. Yeah, so that's the meaning of the first quantity. I'll keep it in years, it's more familiar that way, obviously. All right, so that's one thing that we can do, a simple calculation. And remember here that get date is a function, and you can place one function inside another function called date diff, which is the difference in dates. That's what it's calculating. Specify the interval, you specify the start date, and then you specify the end date. Okay, let's do one more. Next thing is to format the salary so it looks a little more professional. So I'm going to say the following. I'm going to say format, like that. And then you're going to stick in the name of a field. I'm going to say salary, comma. And then you're going to specify between single quotes as follows. You're going to put a C, which is for currency. And then again, between single quotes, type the following code. You're going to type EN and then US. So we're formatting according to the way that financial things are presented in America, in the United States. Keep in mind, in other countries, this could be different. So this is saying, basically, take the salary field, right? Apply a currency format specifier, and then make sure it looks like a US currency to be more specific. Because you could, after all, have currency from Great Britain, from China, from other places. All right, I'm going to say as salary. And let's run that next. And now notice this looks nicely shown here, down below. With the dollar symbol, the comma, the period, all of it. It looks the way it's supposed to look, correct? Okay. And let's do one last one. Remember we had that comment field. So I'm just going to include that for a second and run this again. So we can see what the problem might be with it. Let me run this. And remember, for the comment field, there's a lot of wasted space around the entries, right? To the left, you've got gaps. To the right, you've got gaps, all kinds of things. So we're going to fix that up a little so it looks a bit more neat. And we do that by typing the following. We can begin by left trimming it. That means cutting away blanks on the left side. So first, I'm going to type L trim. And then you specify the name of the field as follows. And replace that now. So we are trimming away spaces on the left as the first stage. Take a look at the effect. And notice that all the spaces on the left, as you can see, have vanished. Everything is neatly aligned on the left side and not. Obviously, it's given this default name of no column. Let's fix that. So I'm going to say as comment. Run it again. And now it says comment as the column name. Good. And if you wanted to, just to show you that you can, I'm going to do this next. You can nest function calls. So I'm remember, see how I can get date here is nested within date diff. You can repeat that. I'm going to do it one more time for emphasis. So I'm going to put L trim. And if I wanted to, I could type R trim like that. And I'm doing that to show you something, which is that you grab the name of the column, then you left trim it, and then the next operation would be to right trim it. It runs from the inside to the outside. All right, execute. Sometimes the effect may not be immediately visible, but it's still being applied. 
So that looks as shown here. At the next stage, imagine we have some mixed cases here, maybe some messy information. You could now, again, type the following upper. Imagine you're printing or something like that, and you want everything to look as clean as possible. So now you want to hit it with the upper case. And now take a look at the next effect. And now it says great work or average work or best work, and everything has been converted to upper case. I do want to make some comments. Remember, from runs first, and after that, you do the select. But clearly, within the select, there's a lot that has to happen, correct? So let me just put down some basic comments. Remember, first of all, get date inside date diff, like that, indicates function nesting, one function within another. Further, when you have something that looks like this, so that you understand how this operates, control C and then control V down below, it operates this way, okay? So grab field, left trim, right trim, like that, and lastly, upper. So grab the field, trim away spaces on left to the right side, and then hit it with the upper. So from the inside, towards the outside, from common towards upper. That's how it operates. And it's called nesting. And lastly, to finish up, here's the little assignments. What I want you to do is type drop table worker data dollar symbol. So get rid of it from SQL Server. And then I want you to take this step, but I want you to try to import it with one slight change as follows. Instead of using nvarchar for the comment field, use just varchar. And I want you to see whether that will work for you. It should answer itself, so I'm not going to provide the answer. If you go to the exercise, you will see exactly what happens. And then you'll understand more thoroughly the need for nvarchar versus varchar. This read through the comments that show up when you try to complete that process that SQL Server tells you. And that's it. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.